This course is dedicated to information security at small and medium-sized companies. Typically, such a company has from 5 to 250 Microsoft Windows or Mac OS computers and Android or iOS mobile devices. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud, or KES Cloud for short, is the optimal choice for protecting small and mid-sized infrastructures. Our course is dedicated to this product, and we will tell you which needs Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud meets, and in which cases another solution is preferable. What capabilities Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud provides. How to create an account in the Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud portal. How to connect computers and mobile devices. How to set up protection for connected devices. What to do afterwards. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud includes the following major components. Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Windows. Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Mac. iOS Mobile Device Management. Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Android and Kaspersky Security for Office 365. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud is a cloud-based administration system that has a web interface named Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Console. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud is available in three versions. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Plus. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Pro. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud is licensed per user. You can protect one computer, desktop, laptop or server and two mobile devices, Android or iOS, per user, and three Office 365 accounts per every two users. Kaspersky offers three products for small and medium-sized infrastructures. Kaspersky Small Office Security. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud, which is covered in this course. Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Business. Let's look at what sort of cases each product suits. Kaspersky Small Office Security is designed to protect small businesses and includes anti-malware protection, software update management, vulnerability scanning and other useful functionality. This product is adapted to infrastructures of approximately 5 to 25 devices. This number is large enough to require centralized management, but is not enough for hiring an administrator. That is why the optimal solution for managing this product is the web console available on the Kaspersky website named Kaspersky Small Office Security Management Portal. Starting with 10 to 20 devices, we can recommend Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud provides full-fledged protection for workstations, servers, mobile devices and Office 365. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud includes a set of components that is sufficient for reliable protection. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud is designed for companies large enough to create configuration profiles for device groups, use notifications and regular reports, but not large enough to purchase and configure a full-fledged Kaspersky Security Center administration server. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud provides not only an account on a Kaspersky web server, which is the case with the Kaspersky Small Office Security Management Portal, but also a fairly powerful administration console. It is deployed on cloud servers managed by Kaspersky specialists. A Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud license allows a customer to connect up to 999 users to each workspace. In this case, the term, workspace, describes a virtual administration server that a company uses to manage security on its devices connected to Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud. For larger infrastructures, Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Business is optimal. This product has several versions with different sets of components. Unlike Kaspersky Small Office Security and Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud, Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Business permits deployment of its administration server and console not only in the cloud, but also on an on-premises server. Let's sum up what Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud is designed for. Infrastructures that consist of Windows and Mac OS workstations and servers and Android and iOS mobile devices. Geographically distributed infrastructures that comprise several small offices or users who work remotely. In this case, Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud allows you to centrally manage protection of devices in different geographical locations and use workspaces to logically separate offices. There are two main scenarios when using Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud or protection of small and mid-sized infrastructures, as described earlier in protection services delivered by managed service providers. In both cases, a Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud license has a limit on the number of connected users no more than 999 users per workspace. What can a Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Administrator do? Connect new devices by sending a link to the installation package that includes Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud synchronization parameters, create and apply different configuration profiles to different user groups, remotely scan devices, 
remotely update signature databases, receive notifications about events logged on the devices, manage licenses, add new licenses, receive notifications about upcoming expiration, send commands to protected mobile devices, lock a device, receive GPS coordinates, wipe all data. Some functions are only available for Android devices, manage several offices from a single console. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud consists of several components. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Console is the web interface through which an administrator can manage protection. Network Agent and Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Windows and for Mac provide protection for workstations and servers running Windows or Mac OS. Although technically, these are four different applications. Network Agent for Windows, Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Windows, Network Agent for Mac and Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Mac. We describe them together, because the network agent plus Kaspersky endpoint security pairs work similarly on Windows and Mac. The mobile device management profile protects iOS devices. Kaspersky endpoint security for Android. Protection for Android mobile devices. Kaspersky security for Office 365. Protection for Microsoft Office 365 services. Kaspersky endpoint security cloud must be accessible from the administrator's computer over TCP ports 8080 and 8081. The former is required to access Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud web interface. The latter is required to access installation packages from each managed Windows or Mac device over TCP 13000, from each mobile device over TCP 13292. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Internal Web Server distributes installation packages and mobile device management profiles via TCP port 8081. Unless you are ready to consider an alternative method of delivering installation packages, which is impossible for mobile device management profiles anyway, make sure that Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud is accessible via TCP port 8081. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud servers are deployed in a virtual infrastructure and fully serviced by Kaspersky specialists. Signing up to Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud is free, but you will need a license to connect devices. When you sign up to Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud, a 30-day trial license is provided automatically. Replace it when it expires or as soon as you purchase a commercial license. The Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud console is an administrator's tool and the only one available for managing Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud. You can open Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Console in any up-to-date browser from any device with internet access. The only condition is that cloud.kaspersky.com must be accessible over TCP 8080. Officially, the following browsers are supported. Microsoft Edge 13 or later, Google Chrome 65 or later, Mozilla Firefox 45 or later, Apple Safari 8 or later. Microsoft Internet Explorer is not supported. When you connect a device to your Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud workspace, different programs are installed on it depending on the operating system. On Windows workstations and servers, Kaspersky Endpoint Security and Network Agent are installed. Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Windows features essential protection effective against mass attacks, protection from advanced threats, and control components. Network Agent is responsible for communications between Kaspersky Endpoint Security and Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Server. Network Agent receives configuration changes for Kaspersky Endpoint Security, and also informs Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud about detected threats, outdated databases and user attempts to carry out prohibited actions. On macOS, everything works in a similar manner, but other programs are used. Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Mac and Network Agent for Mac. On iOS devices, a mobile device management profile is installed. This is a small XML file that specifies the address and certificate of the administration server. After the mobile device management profile is installed, you can remotely control the device from the administration console. On Android, Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Mobile is installed. This application is responsible for protection as well as for communications with Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Server. To use protection for Office 365, Grant Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud access to the Special Office 365 account with special permissions. The Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud server and protected devices can communicate on schedule and on demand. Planned synchronization with Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud is always initiated by the client, 
meaning, by the protected device. Different synchronization periods are configured for different devices. Windows or Mac OS 15 minutes, iOS or Android 6 hours. You cannot change the frequency of scheduled synchronizations in Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud. On-demand synchronization is available for Windows servers and workstations, as well as for iOS and Android mobile devices. This capability permits you to receive GPS data, and to lock or wipe a device. To receive these commands, the target device must be connected to the internet. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud provides all essential technologies needed to protect and administer not-so-big infrastructures, full-fledged protection against threats for Windows and Mac OS workstations and servers, protection for Android devices, anti-malware, protection from phishing, factory reset, protection for iOS devices, factory reset, remote wipe, protection for Office 365, malware protection, quarantine, protection against mail exploits and ghost spoofing, data discovery. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud is available in three versions. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud, Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Plus and Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Pro. They differ in the set of included components. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud ensures fundamental protection. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Plus features extended security management and controls and Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Pro additionally provides incident investigation and response components, as well as information security training. Let's start with the Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Windows application. It protects devices against threats and helps control users' actions. The protection components are most numerous. They provide the following functionality. Virus scanning, file threat protection, mail threat protection, web threat protection. File Threat Protection constantly monitors files opened on the device and scans them for malware prior to allowing the user to access them. This is the most important protection component, because it blocks most malware. Never disable it. Mail Threat Protection scans email messages and checks for malicious attachments on the fly. If Mail Threat Protection is disabled, an attachment will be scanned by File Threat Protection when the user tries to open it. However, it is easier to delete a malicious file before it is saved to disk. Besides, on-the-fly scanning consumes fewer resources. Web threat protection intercepts web traffic and scans downloaded files for malware, does not allow the user to open phishing websites or websites that spread malware. Disabling web threat protection makes the user vulnerable to phishing attacks. System scanning does not intercept anything. It runs on schedule and thoroughly scans files on the hard drive. Some components of Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Windows do not search for malware. Instead, they help defend devices by reducing attack opportunities. Malicious files can get into the system in various ways. The user can download them from a suspicious site, receive them via email, copy them from an infected removable drive, and so on. To make matters worse, some malicious programs actively look for ways to get on a device. They try to propagate throughout the network or exploit a vulnerability to gain access to various resources. A firewall can block unnecessary connections. This is another popular method of dealing with attack opportunities. A laptop or workstation rarely needs to accept inbound connections. Usually it establishes outbound connections to websites, local servers, mail servers, and so on. A firewall prevents active network attacks by restricting incoming connections to the computer. The firewall in Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Windows includes preset rules that block potentially dangerous connections, especially inbound connections from the Internet. The Network Threat Protection component complements the firewall. Network Threat Protection analyzes information received over the network and compares it with signatures of known network attacks. If a match is detected, the connection is blocked. We can group Kaspersky Endpoint Security Components as follows. Components responsible for static protection. Components responsible for dynamic protection and additional components. File. Mail and Web Threat Protection pertain to static protection. They scan objects before they are launched and prevent the downloading of dangerous objects. Behavior detection, exploit prevention, remediation engine and intrusion prevention play the main role here. The control components in the firewall also play their part. It is crucial to detect malicious objects. To solve this task, the behavior detection component monitors all software activities and compares them with dangerous behavior patterns. 
it controls file access operations, network connections and system calls. Intrusion prevention categorizes applications into groups according to their trust level. Trusted, low restricted, high restricted and untrusted. Kaspersky Endpoint Security assigns a trust category to each application when it is launched for the first time. The main categorization tool is Kaspersky Security Network. Intrusion prevention restricts each application's interactions with other software depending on its trust category. Exploit prevention protects against various attacks when adversaries exploit vulnerable software to obtain administrator privileges or conceal the execution of malicious code. Exploit prevention controls application launch operations and when a vulnerable application starts another application without an explicit user command, the launch is blocked. Remediation engine rolls back actions performed by malware detected by file threat protection, virus scan and behavior detection. Any changes to the file system, creating, moving or renaming files or registry values, creating registry entries, will be cancelled. The database that contains malware descriptions helps detect most malicious files. When scanning objects for malicious code, Kaspersky Endpoint Security checks whether the database contains similar descriptions. When a new malicious object appears, Kaspersky adds a new description to the database. To ensure reliable protection, the most recent version of the database must be available on the device. A special update module is responsible for this. It automatically checks for updates and downloads the very latest data to the device. To be assured of protection, update the database regularly. It is also important to allow Kaspersky Endpoint Security to use the Kaspersky Security Network. Kaspersky Security Network, KSN, is a cloud technology that improves accuracy of decisions made by the protection components. Kaspersky Security Network receives information about files from protected devices, analyzes it using machine learning, takes into account when a file was first detected, whether it is widespread and in which regions, whether it is signed with a certificate, what certificate, and so on. Kaspersky experts also analyze numerous suspicious files. After the analysis, each file is placed into one of the trust groups that we mentioned earlier. For each trust group, Kaspersky analysts have developed scenarios, what a file is allowed to do and what is forbidden, depending on the group's reputation. File encrypting ransomware is Trojan malware that encrypts files on the computer and demands a ransom for their decryption. File encrypting ransomware gets on a device through email messages and websites. When you open a questionable attachment or click an infected banner. To allay suspicions, adversaries often forge messages from banks and tax organizations. As soon as encrypting ransomware gets on the computer, it connects to its command and control server and sometimes requests an encryption key from it. Then the ransomware encrypts files in local and network folders and deletes the originals along with the encryption key. As a result, only the attackers have a copy of the key. When encryption is completed, the ransomware displays a message demanding the user pay a ransom in cryptocurrency for decryption. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud protects against encrypting ransomware at all stages of an attack. It intercepts infected messages and links to sites that distribute malware, prohibits saving of malicious objects to the drive, prevents questionable applications from accessing files, does not allow the user to run suspicious files. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud features two control components, device control and web control. Device control restricts the connection of certain devices, such as removable drives, modems or printers, to the computer. Device control reduces the risk of not only infections, but also data leakage. If it is forbidden to connect drives and printers to the computer, then it will be impossible to copy or print sensitive data. Web control can be compared to parental control in the business context. Web control can prohibit users from visiting social networks, job sites, the sites of arms or drug dealers, and viewing adult content. You can also prohibit the downloading of audio, video and executable files from the internet. In addition to reducing the chances of infection, this component increases work efficiency by preventing distractions. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud allows you to enforce encryption on managed Windows and macOS devices. Encryption prevents unauthorized access to data stored on the device. Windows devices are encrypted using BitLocker. This is a Microsoft Windows security and encryption feature. When managed via Kaspersky Endpoint Security, BitLocker encrypts all logical partitions. Recovery keys are stored in the Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud infrastructure. Encryption management is available starting with Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Plus. You can use Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud to install software updates that fix vulnerabilities found on protected Windows devices. 
Update management is also available starting with Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Plus. Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Mac differs from Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Windows. Mac OS is considered to be a more secure system and fewer components are used, namely, virus scanning, file threat protection, web threat protection, network threat protection, file vault encryption. In addition to anti-malware scanning, which requires updates, online Kaspersky security network checks are used on Mac OS but there are no control components, or behavior detection, or firewall, or mail threat protection. Devices running macOS are encrypted using the FileVault encryption technology. When the administrator enables FileVault encryption, Kaspersky Endpoint Security prompts the user for his or her credentials. Encryption will begin only after the user enters the credentials and the device restarts. Recovery keys are stored in the Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud infrastructure. Encryption management is available starting with Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Plus. If an application can be installed on a device, then malware can be installed too. Additionally, if a device can be connected to the internet, then the user may visit a phishing site. In this sense, mobile devices are similar to workstations and should be protected in a similar way. When manufacturers improve the performance of tablets and smartphones, on the one hand, they enhance capabilities enabling users to work with mail. MS Office files, and so on, but on the other hand, they attract the attention of malware creators, since these resources can also be used to launch malicious programs. Mobile devices are handy for web surfing. Therefore, they need to be protected from phishing attacks. A mobile device can be lost or stolen, so it is important that the security app can enforce stricter user authentication to prevent unauthorized access, as well as provide tools that will help find the device if it is lost. Mobile devices are less powerful than workstations, so real-time protection and on-demand scanning just cannot be as thorough as on workstations. On the other hand, there are significantly less malware for mobile platforms than for computers. If a mobile device is lost, the most desperate measure is to remotely wipe data from it. In this case, even if someone gains access to the device, data will not be leaked. Yes, there may be significantly fewer threats for mobile devices than for Windows, but still enough to worry about. An infected phone can send spam messages not only to email contacts, but also to the phone book contacts. When considering a smartphone from the perspective of corporate security, the most valuable asset is sensitive data. Attackers are likely to be interested in compromised data. Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Mobile is installed on mobile platforms. This is a counterpart of Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Windows designed for mobile platforms. Different applications are installed on different operating systems. Mobile Device Management for iOS, Kaspersky Endpoint Security Mobile for Android. Android does not prohibit access to the device's file system and it can even be used as a removable drive, but with some restrictions. All Android applications run in an isolated environment and system files have read-only access. However, users can gain root privileges in the operating system, which will give them unlimited administrator permissions, including modification of system files and access to all data of all installed applications. Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Mobile cannot prevent this, but can detect routing, notify the administrator and perform a pre-configured action, for example, lock the device or automatically wipe corporate data. Microsoft Office 365 has some basic built-in protection that provides a minimal level of security, but this is not enough to feel safe. Kaspersky Security for Microsoft Office 365 offers advanced protection against phishing, ransomware, spam and business email compromise. Kaspersky Security for Microsoft Office 365 features components similar to those of Kaspersky Endpoint Security, but designed for the Office 365 cloud infrastructure. Exchange Online Protection can detect malicious files in attachments and phishing attacks on the fly. The OneDrive and SharePoint Online components scan files for malicious code and delete them by default. Microsoft Teams Protection Scans transferred files for malicious code as well as having the same components as Kaspersky Endpoint Security. Kaspersky Security for Microsoft Office 365 also has data discovery. This component ensures that any confidential data sent through or stored in Exchange Online mailboxes, OneDrive repositories and SharePoint sites do not leak. By default, all detected sensitive data is quarantined, and the administrator can take measures to prevent any leakage.
a license is a time-limited right to use Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud based on the license agreement. The following license types are available. A trial license is a free license for trying out Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud. A trial license is usually short-term. It covers Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Pro functionality. A commercial license is a paid license that a customer obtains when purchasing a Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud product. You can buy a commercial license on the Kaspersky website or from Kaspersky Partners. When a commercial license expires, you will need to renew it. A subscription is a license for which a customer pays on a periodical basis, typically, monthly. A subscription can only be purchased from partner companies. A subscription is renewed automatically. You can stop automatic subscription renewal at any time. Some partners also provide the opportunity to freeze it for a while. Both a commercial license and subscription can have a grace period. This is the time during which Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud continues to operate in full-fledged mode after the license expires. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud is licensed per user. As of now, a license key includes protection for one workstation or server and two mobile devices per user, and three Office 365 accounts per every two users. For example, if you buy a license key for 10 users, you can protect 10 workstations or servers, 20 Android or iOS mobile devices, and 15 Office 365 accounts. A licensing unit user is not the same as a real user in the management console. You can assign many devices to a single real user, while some devices may not have owners in the system. In any case, all devices added to Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud will be protected. The number of licensing units are conventional users depends on the devices that need protection and is calculated as the greater number between the total amount of workstations, servers and laptops on the one hand and half of the mobile devices on the other. A Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud workspace can protect 999 users at most. Technically, this limitation means that it is impossible to add more than 999 users to a single workspace. Kaspersky Small Office Security Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud and Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Business are based on different applications and different approaches to remote management. Migration between these solutions should begin with the preparation of the target management center. Sign up to the selected cloud console or install and configure an on-premises Kaspersky Security Center. You can export settings from Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Windows and then import them into a Kaspersky Security Center policy. Network agents are not the same in Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud and Kaspersky Security Center, and you will have to reinstall them. Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Windows is the same everywhere. With macOS, migration is performed in a similar manner. The only difference is that you will not be able to export settings via the local interface. To connect devices to Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud, you need to create a workspace, but first of all, you need to sign up to Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud. To connect a computer, download and run an installation package. You can download it using the link in an invitation, or from the company's workspace on the website. To connect a mobile device, follow the link in the email invitation. To be able to send invitations, add employees' email addresses to the workspace. This video will help you create a workspace and connect devices to it. Open a web browser and go to Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud at cloud.kaspersky.com. Click Sign Up. Then enter your email address and password. The password must consist of at least eight characters, including uppercase and lowercase letters and digits. Confirm personal data processing and click Create an Account. Check your mailbox. Open the message and follow the link to complete registration. Click Continue. Enter your email address and password. At the first step of the wizard, accept the Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud terms of use. Otherwise, you will not be able to create a workspace. Choose the country where your company resides. The wizard will detect your country by IP address automatically, but you can change it if necessary. Based on your choice, prices will be displayed in your national currency. Select the solution to use. Accept the Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud agreement. Next. Specify the name of your company. This doesn't affect anything in particular, but users will see it in the email invitations, so it is better to state the full official name. Next, specify the country and, if necessary, the state or region where your company is located. 
This selection determines where your Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Server will be physically located and which language will be used in the interface by default. You can change the interface language in the settings at any time though. Specify the approximate number of devices that you are going to protect, including workstations, servers, smartphones and tablets. This choice affects the resources that will be allocated to your Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Server. If you are creating a workspace in Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud for the first time, you will be asked to fill in your contact information. First name, last name, company name, email address, country, zip code and phone number. Only the first and last name are required. The other data is optional. You will also need to accept the privacy policy. After you prove that you are not a robot, the workspace will be created, and you will receive a confirmation email. Follow the link on the screen or in the email to go to your workspace. Accept the license agreement for the Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud components. In the future, when connecting devices, you will not have to accept additional agreements. Next, specify the proxy server settings if one is used at your company. Accept the Kaspersky Security Network Statement. KSN allows you to protect against the latest threats as soon as they are detected by Kaspersky specialists. Protection can work without KSN, but in this case it receives information about new threats only with the next update of signature databases, which usually happens several hours later than data appears in KSN. Besides, KSN protects against false positives. If you do not accept the agreement, the protection will use only signature databases. You will be able to accept the agreement and activate KSN later in the settings. Accept the data discovery agreement. The data discovery technology monitors data in Office 365 and protects it from leakage and compromise. This component will only work if you accept the agreement. You will also be able to accept the agreement later, when activating data discovery. Next, you can configure endpoint detection and response preview. This component allows you to analyze non-standard attacks visualizes them and facilitates response. We will tell you about it in more detail in other videos. Finally, accept the limitation of liability agreement for endpoint detection and response preview. Your workspace is now set up. A 30-day trial license is activated in each workspace immediately upon creation. If you have a commercial license, add it to your workspace to use protection for as long as the license permits. Adding a license is simple. Switch to the license tab. Click Enter Activation Code and specify your code. If you plan to use a single security profile for the whole company, you don't need to add more users. However, if you plan to use multiple profiles, add at least one user per profile. To add a user, open the Users section and click Add Users. Enter the user's email addresses, one address per line, and after you click the Next button, double-check them. If you want to change something, click an alias or address to edit it. Next you will see the text of the invitation that will be sent to the users. You cannot change this text. You can send invitations to the users immediately or cancel sending and do it later from the list of users. The added users will appear in the list. Also, you can see the number of devices in the security profile assigned to each user, and which users have Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Administrator permissions. You can connect devices running the following operating systems to the workspace, Windows, Mac OS, Android and iOS. To connect devices to the workspace, send invitations to the users. All they need to do is follow the link in the invitation, download the installer and run it. Users don't need to make any decisions. A user must have administrator permissions to be able to install the components. The link in the invitation is universal and helps install a security application on any device computer, smartphone or tablet. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud automatically recognizes the operating system version and redirects the device to the respective installation package. The downloaded distribution contains Kaspersky Endpoint Security and KSC Network Agent. The installation wizard does not prompt the user for anything, but requires administrative permissions. You can't choose a language pack for Mac OS. Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Mac includes several localizations and selects the language automatically according to the operating system settings. If Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Mac is not activated during the installation, it will receive a license as soon as it connects to the cloud server. You can install Kaspersky Endpoint Security for mobile and connect a device to the workspace if it is running Android 4.2 or later. 
If you cannot open the invitation on a phone for some reason, open it on your computer. Scroll down and scan the QR code with the device that needs to be connected. The QR code contains the same link as the invitation. The link first leads to a web server in Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud that identifies the device's operating system. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud redirects Android devices to the Kaspersky Endpoint Security for mobile page in Google Play, from where you can install the application. Complete the setup wizard of Kaspersky Endpoint Security for mobile. Accept the user agreement and grant the following rights to the application. File access permissions are required to scan files for malicious components. Administrator permissions are required to lock or wipe the device remotely if it is lost or stolen. Location permissions are required to determine the device's location if it is lost or stolen. Camera access permissions are necessary to take pictures of a person who uses a stolen or lost phone. Accessibility service permissions enable the app to scan websites before they are opened. The installation has completed. If you are using a Samsung device, you will also need to accept an agreement for integration with Samsung Knox. After the installation completes, Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Mobile will report issues because there is no license on the device. Kaspersky Endpoint Security will receive it from the server in a few minutes, after which it will update the signature databases and scan the device. Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Mobile synchronizes with the workspace once every six hours by default. Additionally, Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Mobile receives messages from the workspace via Firebase Cloud Messaging, FCM, a push notification system by Google. Thanks to FCM, the device can receive updated settings and commands within seconds instead of waiting for the next scheduled synchronization. Installation on a Windows computer differs only in appearance. As is the case for other devices, download the installation package, run it and wait for the installation to finish. By default, computers are not assigned to users and the default security profile is applied to them. If you plan to use custom security profiles, Assign owners to those devices and select the necessary profiles for them. Kaspersky Security for Office 365 allows you to protect your Microsoft Office 365 data from threats that can harm users or your company through cloud applications. Kaspersky Security for Office 365 scans email messages in exchange online for malicious files and phishing attacks, and your corporate OneDrive and SharePoint online storages for dangerous files. A Kaspersky Security for Office 365 workspace is created independently of a Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud workspace. To create it, click the gray Kaspersky Security for Office 365 icon on the Kaspersky Business Hub homepage. Accept the terms of use and select a data center to create your workspace. That's it. To connect your Office 365 organization, click Grant Access and enter the username and password of a user who has global administrator privileges. Grant Kaspersky Security for Office 365 the required permissions. Without them, Kaspersky Security for Office 365 will not be able to scan files and email messages. When everything is ready, Kaspersky Security for Office 365 components will appear among the Office 365 applications. When Kaspersky Security for Office 365 detects email messages that should be deleted or modified according to the security policy, these messages get quarantined instead of being deleted. To protect Exchange Online, Create an Exchange Online Security Policy or add mailboxes to an existing policy. To create a policy, click Exchange Online Protection and then create a security policy. After entering the policy name, you will be redirected to the policy setup page. You can activate and configure the anti-malware, anti-spam, anti-phishing, mass mail prevention, attachment filtering and denialist components here. Specify the mailboxes that will use this policy and the mailboxes to exclude. If you create several security policies, you can change their priority to resolve rule conflicts. To reorder priorities, use the arrows to the right of the policy names. On other tabs, you can configure OneDrive and SharePoint online protection. For OneDrive, you can enable or disable protection, choose the action to take when a malicious file is detected, configure security alerts and select the users to protect. SharePoint online settings are similar to those of OneDrive with the only difference that you can select sites instead of users to protect, and exclude sites from protection. After configuration is completed, the protection will take effect. If threats are detected, 
This information will be displayed on the dashboard. You can also create a security report about the detected threats on the reports page. The quarantined malicious files are listed on the quarantine page. You have created a workspace, connected devices to it, assigned owners to devices and distributed the licenses. Everything is working with default settings. The connected devices have received security profiles from the server and are using their settings for protection. What should the administrator do next? Monitor protection, respond to threats, fine-tune settings to improve protection and make the user experience more comfortable. The default security profile provides optimal settings. Do not edit it without understanding what result you want to achieve. We will also tell you which settings should remain unchanged. The default profile does not allow users to change security settings, but it does not prohibit exiting Kaspersky endpoint security for Windows. Also, users who have administrator permissions can uninstall Kaspersky endpoint security. To prevent this, configure password protection in the security profile. You can find security profiles in security management. At first, only the default profile is available there. You cannot delete it, and it applies to all devices for which no other profile is selected. For a small company of 10 to 20 devices, a single profile may be enough. If one profile is insufficient, create others. Click Add and then Create. Enter the profile name and click Create. In Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud, each security profile contains security settings for all devices, Windows, Mac, Android and iOS. Each operating system has a separate section in the settings. The password for Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Windows is configured in the interface settings located in the Advanced section. Password protection is disabled by default. Open the password protection settings and specify the username and password that you will use when managing the application on a device. Click Save. To apply a profile to a user, click Assign to Users and Groups and select one or more users whose devices will use this profile. You can also change the security profile assigned to a user on the Users page. After the new security profile settings are applied to a device, the user will need to know the password to be able to exit Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Windows. Scanning removable drives helps prevent the spread of malicious files. When a user launches a malicious file or copies it to a hard disk, file threat protection intercepts the operation and deletes the malicious file. However, if a file is simply stored on a removable drive and the user does not try to do anything with it, protection against file threats will not process that file, and it will remain there. If the user passes the drive to a customer or partner, they can infect their computers. As a result, the company's reputation can be compromised, even if its computers do not get infected. That is why we recommend that you configure automatic scanning for removable drives whenever they are connected to computers. Removable drive scanning is disabled by default. Scanning is configured in the Security Settings section. You can choose between full and quick scanning. Full scanning will scan all files on the drives, including archives. This way, more dangerous files can be detected, but the user will have to wait a little longer. Quick scanning checks only files and does not process archives. Removable drives can have a volume of hundreds of gigabytes and full scanning of such drives, especially if they are connected to slow interfaces like USB 2.0, can take a long time. To save users time, you can limit the volume of drives to be scanned or allow the users to terminate scanning. File threat protection, behavior detection and other protection components intercept all operations on the computer and block any infection attempts. However, if a file is simply stored in a folder or archive and is not run, it will remain unnoticed. Real-time protection reacts only to actions. It is not designed to deal with passive threats. To reduce the risk from passive threats, you should regularly scan computers for malware. Such scanning not only checks all files and archives, but also scans memory for rootkits. Sometimes, it is difficult to choose a proper schedule for scanning. In this case, you can use idle scanning. This option is located in the Advanced Performance section. Just enable it and save the settings. Scheduled scanning is configured in the Workspace options, not in the Security Profile. Meaning, the same schedule will be used on all connected devices. By default, the schedule is set to manually. This means the user is supposed to start scanning manually. Unfortunately, in reality, this results in scanning being performed extremely rarely. Switch the scan task start mode to by schedule, 
and select the frequency, day of the week, and launch time. Additionally, you can choose a security level. The low level skips too many files and makes scanning less efficient. In addition to anti-malware protection, Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud features control components that prohibit specific actions capable of harming the computer or the company's business. Device control limits the use of devices connected to the computer according to the configured rules. Web control restricts access to websites depending on their content. Application control allows or prohibits running of selected programs on computer. Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Windows can not only detect and block threats, but also control users' actions. Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Windows can block attempts to connect various devices to the computer, such as removable drives, modems, printers, and so on. Companies may want to prohibit the use of removable drives because they may contain malicious files and are difficult to control. It makes sense to block removable drives to improve security and to reduce the risk of information leakage. Sometimes, management protects the company from possible leaks by prohibiting not only external drives, but also printers, scanners, cameras, modems and network adapters. Device control allows you to implement and administer such prohibitions. Device control pertains to the management settings within a security profile. Click the settings link under rules for blocking device categories to open the list of device categories that you need to prohibit on the computers. By default, all devices are allowed. To prohibit a device type, for example, removable drives, Change the value in the access column from allow to block and save the settings. Device control is disabled by default. Enable it and save the changes. As soon as a computer receives these settings, the users will no longer be able to use prohibited devices. Kaspersky Endpoint Security will block such a device upon connection and display the respective information message. However, blocking all devices without distinction may be counterproductive, since some employees may need removable drives for their work. To prevent blocking specific devices, make them trusted. To make a device trusted, first you need to find out its ID. The easiest way is to let Kaspersky Endpoint Security block such a device, find the blocking event and copy the device ID from it. If a user sends a device unblock request, it will also contain the device ID. To add a device to exceptions, open the device control settings and click settings below exclusions from device control. Click add and select the name of the exception. Enter the device ID and, if you want to, add a comment. Click OK and then save. As soon as the computer receives the updated security policy, the specified device will not be blocked, since it is included in the list of exceptions. If you no longer trust a device, simply delete it from the list. In addition to its main functionality that we described earlier, web control can block banners, which speeds up web browsing and reduces the risk of computer infection, since banners may contain malicious links. Web control pertains to the management settings within a security profile. By default, web control is disabled. By changing access mode, you can either allow access to all sites except those prohibited, or deny access to all sites except those allowed. To ban social networks, you need to create a new rule. Click the plus add button. Name the rule. Select the category of sites in an action. Allow, block, warn. A message that the user should not visit this site will be displayed every time when they try to open a social network. If a site is blocked, a user trying to open it will simply see that the website is not accessible. Application control enables you to centrally allow or prohibit specific programs on computers. You can find its settings in the app control section of a security profile. Application control is disabled by default. This component can either prohibit the launch of all programs except those that are allowed, or allow the launch of all programs except those that are prohibited. In either case, you will need to draw up a list of applications. Preset categories are available for your convenience. Select the necessary categories and add them to your list. Another method is to specify the path to the executable file that you want to include in the list. Additionally, you Encryption protects data from unauthorized access. It turns a message or text into a meaningless set of characters. To decrypt such a text, you will need a key that will turn the encrypted message back into readable text. For confidentiality, the key must be known only to the sender and recipient. 
Modern encryption tools use well-known encryption algorithms, and only the key is kept secret. A key is a binary sequence of a few dozen to hundreds of bits, depending on the algorithm. This scheme is more flexible because if a key is lost, it is enough to replace the key without changing the algorithm. Another area where encryption is often used is protection of data stored on a device. However, there is a fundamental difference between encrypting transferred and stored data. The key must never be stored in the same place as the encrypted data at rest. For this reason, there are two main approaches to encrypting stored data. Generate the key based on a password. Store the key on an external device. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud allows you to configure and manage encryption on Windows and Mac OS devices. Encryption is available in Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Plus and Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Pro. Windows devices are encrypted using BitLocker Drive encryption. BitLocker is a full-fledged encryption system that is included with some MS Windows operating systems starting with Windows Vista. BitLocker is missing from server versions of Windows by default, but you can install it there if necessary. BitLocker encrypts information by logical partitions. If the Windows partition needs to be encrypted, the bootloader and other system components must be saved on another system partition, which will remain unencrypted. Kaspersky Endpoint Security is compatible with BitLocker on all Windows versions where it can be installed. Without Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud, BitLocker is managed by group policy objects. GPOs, GPOs do not permit the enabling or disabling of encryption manually, but they may conflict with the encryption settings of Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud. We recommend that you disable BitLocker management in GPOs to prevent conflicts with Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud allows you to adjust some BitLocker settings. More often than not, the default settings do not need to be changed, but sometimes fine-tuning can solve an incompatibility issue or improve performance. Enable the use of BitLocker authentication on Windows tablets. This parameter permits using pre-boot authentication on tablets and other devices that do not have a keyboard. If this option is enabled, a virtual keyboard will be used for authentication. Hardware encryption improves performance because encryption and decryption utilizes a dedicated encryption chip built into the hard drive instead of the CPU. Authentication by using Trusted Platform Module, TPM, BitLocker can store its encryption key either simply on the drive, encrypted, password protected, or on a special motherboard chip, Trusted Platform Module. When Kaspersky Endpoint Security Services receive the command to enable BitLocker, a window opens where the user must enter a pre-boot authentication password. The specified password will be bound to the device rather than to the current user or any other accounts used on the computer. As soon as BitLocker receives the password, it generates a recovery key for the volume. Kaspersky Endpoint Security sends the recovery key to the Kaspersky Endpoint Security Server so that the disk can be decrypted if the operating system malfunctions. To get the recovery key, you will need to contact Kaspersky Support. After creating the recovery key, BitLocker prompts the user to restart the device and checks the system to make sure that encryption and decryption will go smoothly. At the first system start after encryption is enabled, BitLocker prompts the user for the password. If the password is entered correctly, BitLocker begins encrypting the disk when the system starts. If the user presses escape, BitLocker presumes that something went wrong and encryption will not begin after the system starts. The user can cancel encryption only before it starts. After encryption begins, the system will only start once you enter the BitLocker password. Devices running macOS use FileVault drive encryption. When the Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Administrator enables encryption on Mac devices, the users are prompted for their usernames and passwords. Encryption will start after a user enters the credentials and restarts the device. Encryption takes place in the background. When the encryption completes and Mac restarts, the user will need to enter the username and password to start the device. No matter how effective your protection and control systems are, vulnerabilities must be fixed in operating systems and applications. Of course, the administrator can take care of this, but Kaspersky Endpoint Security simplifies the task. In this video, we will tell you how to use Kaspersky Endpoint Security to detect and fix vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities in operating systems are the most dangerous because they are widespread and adversaries use them for attacks most often. Although some application vulnerabilities can be just as dangerous, for example, 
Vulnerabilities in browsers or popular office applications. To fix Windows vulnerabilities, it is sufficient to regularly install updates released by Microsoft. The Windows Update system can take care of that. To fix vulnerabilities in other software products, it is usually necessary to install a new version of the application or a patch released by the manufacturer. The main concern is automation of regular updates. While Windows provides tools that automate updates, installing updates for other products involves a lot of manual work. At the same time, even if installation of updates is automated, the administrator cannot easily control the installation. If it has completed, or, for example, the download was interrupted. Similar issues arise when updating applications. You need to control application versions on all devices and understand which version you need to install. This is where Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud comes in handy. The administrator can use the update management capabilities to monitor vulnerabilities and available updates for Microsoft software and third-party applications. The vulnerability assessment task can run daily or weekly, depending on the selected schedule, and receive up-to-date information about software vulnerabilities. The patch management task forces computers and servers to download and install updates for the operating system and applications. Availability of the vulnerability assessment and patch management functionality depends on the license. The Plus and Pro licenses cover the full functionality. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud searches for information about known vulnerabilities and updates available for Windows and other software. Kaspersky Network Agent collects information about updates that are already installed or need to be installed. Kaspersky Endpoint Security is not involved into this process. Kaspersky Network Agent collects information about vulnerabilities too. It automatically monitors application launches and additionally scans all applications installed on the computer. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud uses information that Kaspersky experts gather and maintain based on analysis of typical information security threats and vulnerabilities. All data is available in the workspace. The administrator can see, filter and use it. Information from the Kaspersky database and Windows Update metadata helps automate vulnerability fixing. Windows Update metadata links vulnerabilities to updates that are released to fix them. Kaspersky database does the same for other applications. Kaspersky network agent installed on a computer receives information about available updates from Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud and sends a command to download and install Windows updates. Vulnerability assessment settings pertain to security management. It is enabled by default and collects information from all Windows devices connected to the workspace. You can adjust the schedule of the vulnerability assessment task. Click Vulnerability Detection Settings and select the frequency, day and time when the task will run. You can sort the list of vulnerabilities by vendor, severity or plan to fix. Click a vulnerability name to see detailed information, description, criticality, the number of devices where it has been detected, application, last detection date and time. Availability of updates that fix the vulnerability. Click View Patches to see the updates that can fix this vulnerability. Select the update you want to install and click Approve Patch Installation to schedule the installation. Different versions of operating systems may require different versions of updates. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud discovers the operating system version and offers the administrator the required update. The Vulnerabilities Report shows the general status of vulnerabilities in the corporate network. It displays vulnerable devices distributed by the vulnerability risk level. Click a vulnerability to see the list of computers where it has been detected. The vulnerability assessment task only scans Windows devices for vulnerabilities, but does not install updates. To automate the installation of updates, configure the patch management task in Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud. The patch management task pertains to security management and is not bound to a particular security profile. Click Patch Installation Settings to configure the patch management task. First of all, select an update installation mode. Install approved patches only. In this mode, you need to examine available updates, accept the license agreements and mark as allowed those updates that you want to install. Install all patches mode allows you to automatically install all updates except those that require acceptance of a license agreement, usually new versions of third-party applications, in the installation area parameter. Select where updates need to be installed, workstations, servers, or all devices. Next, select the frequency of installations, the task start time and other parameters. The start installation at device restart or shutdown parameter only permits installation of updates when a user turns off or restarts a device. This will reduce the impact on the device performance.
some administrators use the Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Console only to adjust security settings and prefer to receive notifications about incidents by email. To configure notifications, click Configure Event Notifications on the main page of the console. In the window that opens, select the recipients who need to receive the messages. Next, select the events that you want to be notified about. There are four events groups available. Critical events lead to data loss, device malfunctioning or critical errors. For example, detection of malicious objects or network attacks, a dangerous link opened by a user, and so on. Functional failures are errors in malfunctioning of Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud. For example, an error when deleting a file, wiping a device or downloading updates, and so on. Warnings refers to notifications about events that do not pose an immediate threat. A device needs to be restarted the user cancelled an operation, a keyboard authorization error, and so on. Information events notify about successful completion of tasks and application functioning. The specified recipients will receive notifications only about the events that you select. On the Monitoring tab, you can see most recent information about the Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud functioning, such as protection status, database statuses, and so on. Click the links for more details. On the Reports tab, Various reports are available. You can save a report as a PDF or CSV file, if, for example, you need to send reports to managers or store them for statistics. The reports are grouped as follows Protection, Management, and Installed Applications. The Protection group contains the Threats report that displays threats detected on the devices. You can see that this report is still empty. Let's try to download a test file to one of the protected devices. We unpack the archive and try to run it. You can see that Kaspersky Endpoint Security blocks the file. If we open Kaspersky Endpoint Security Reports and select File Threat Protection, we'll see an event about a detected infected file. Let's open the Threats Report in the Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Console. It shows the same test file now. Among other things, you can see the Threat Development Chain graph here, which visualizes how this pseudo-malicious file appeared on the device. This graph helps investigate incidents and avoid similar threats in the future. Now, let's open the mailbox that we set up for event notification. You can see a message about the detected malicious object that contains the detection time, file name, type of malicious object and other useful information about the detected threat. Cloud services are so widespread nowadays that you can find a cloud service for almost any computer-related task. However, cloud services are fraught with threats. Their popularity and availability make them a prime target for attackers who may try to gain access to your data or distribute malware via cloud services. In addition, the user does not need to have administrator privileges on a device to use cloud services. Previously, the lack of permissions to install applications prevented the possibility of installing and using non-work-related applications during working hours, but now, you just need to have a browser to use a cloud service. The cloud discovery component of Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud allows you to monitor and control the use of cloud services on protected Windows devices. To configure this component, go to the cloud discovery section of a security profile. Cloud discovery is disabled by default. Enable it and select the services that you want to prohibit. The services are grouped into five categories. Email, file sharing, messengers, social media and miscellaneous. You can search for a particular service or ban an entire category of services. You can permit or prohibit the use of each service in the list. By default, all services are allowed. To check the effectiveness of cloud discovery, let's prohibit the use of the vContacta social network. Find it in the list and switch the access permission to blocked. Click Save. During the next synchronization, these security profile settings will be applied to the protected computers. Now, when users try to open vk.com, they will see a message that access to this website is prohibited according to the social media rule. Office 365 cloud storages are closely related to employees' work, which may involve business-critical and sensitive data. Information protected by GDPR or other similar laws, as well as business-critical information, can be emailed and stored in SharePoint and OneDrive. If employees violate storage rules, such information may leak out, which may damage the company's reputation and result in very large fines. Wherever such information is stored, access must be strictly controlled and people for whom it is not intended must have no access to it. 
Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud is able to detect critical information in the files saved to an Office 365 cloud storage. The data discovery tool can inform the administrator about files containing confidential data that are stored in Office 365. Data discovery scans file contents and compares this information with multiple personal data templates. All files containing such data are added to a special list. You can activate the data discovery component either from the monitoring tab of the Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud main page, or from the Security Management, Data Discovery page. To activate data discovery, specify the username and password of an Office 365 administrator account and grant the DLP scanner component of Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud permissions to read all files, groups, directories and user profiles. After that, Data Discovery will automatically start scanning Office 365 storages for confidential information. A special Office 365 test storage contains files with character sets that match templates of bank card numbers, driver's licenses, social security numbers and others. When scanning is complete, you can see 10 detected files that contain confidential information in the Data Discovery section of the Information Panel, Monitoring page. To open the complete list, click Go to List of Detections. This link takes you to the Data Discovery Detections page. You can see the full list of detected files there. Detailed information is available for each file. The date of the last change, category of detected sensitive data, file access permissions, file name, who edited the file and in which Office 365 service the file was detected. Click the file name to drill down. You will see the type of data found, full path to the file and a link to it. You can sort the list of detected files by the service where they were found or use an extended filter that allows you to select files by date of the last change, data categories, access type, who edited the file and the name of the service where the file was detected. From the security viewpoint, the administrator should pay attention to the type of access configured for confidential and critical data. Access that is open to the company or to everyone means that not only the person working with the file can access that information which may violate the company's data processing and storage policy. If administrators find a file that is not stored as stipulated by the policy, they can alert the employee to the violation and request that the type of file access is changed. To change the type of file access from company to private, open the file menu in the Office 365 interface, select Manage Access and click Stop Sharing. After that, the file will be available only to its owner. Restricting access to confidential and critical files greatly reduces the ability of adversaries to steal them. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud allows you to repel the vast majority of threats that spread in a variety of ways. However, the company's network may face a targeted attack and, in this case, the anti-malware components won't be enough. The administrators need to understand exactly how the attack was carried out. This will help pinpoint shortcomings in the infrastructure that endanger the company and may lead to financial or reputational damage. The Endpoint Detection and Response EDR, component from the Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Pro Arsenal is ideal for such tasks. EDR focuses on gathering detailed information about an attack. To enable EDR, open the Security Management, Endpoint Detection and Response page. Then simply click Enable Endpoint Detection and Response. The component is now activated and will analyze all security incidents on the protected computers. Let's try to carry out a couple of simple attacks to see how EDR reacts to their detection. First, let's run the iCAR test file. When you try to launch iCAR, Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Windows blocks the file, because it considers it to be malicious. Next, let's use Metasploit to simulate an HTML application attack on a protected computer. The aim of such an attack is to hide malicious code in an HTML application that is downloaded and executed on the computer, which in turn allows it to download and run other files that the attackers intend to use. When you try to open a link to an HTA file in a web browser, Kaspersky Endpoint Security blocks access and shows a message about a dangerous object. You can see the results of the EDR component operation on the monitoring tab of the Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud main window, in the Endpoint Detection and Response section. To see the full list of detected attacks, click Go to List of Alerts. The list of detected threats shows the time of detection, threat status, its name, the attack device and the user assigned to it, the security profile of the device, 
detection technology and a link to detailed information about the threat. Details include all the data collected about the attack. The diagram shows how the attack developed. The entries below provide additional information. In the diagram, we can see all the actions that were performed during the attack, such as child processes started, files saved and network connections established. The list below provides a detailed description for all actions. Processes, file paths and network addresses are specified. In this case, the attack aimed to download an HTA file, HTML application attack. The information about the file includes various details, its name, detection method, the actions taken, as well as MD5 and SHA-256 checksums. Click a checksum to open information about the respective file in Kaspersky Threat Intelligence Portal, which stores data about threats and allows you to check an uploaded file, checksum or web address. Click the name of a detected threat to get detailed information about it. In this case, the malicious code was a basic Trojan attack and we only see general information about such attacks. Let's consult the information received after the launch of ICAR. When started, this file tried to save several files, establish a network connection and run Windows command prompt. If we follow the link to Kaspersky Threat Intelligence Portal, we will see quite a few detected names with the same hash. Let's click the ICAR file name we are familiar with. You can see information about the threat and the possible actions it tries to perform on a computer. We can add the detected malicious file to an indicator of compromise scan task. An indicator of compromise is an object or action that most likely indicates unauthorized access to the system. Such indicators include unusual DNS queries, a significant number of access operations on a single file, access via uncommon ports, malware hash detection, and more. When you add a hash to an IOC scan task, reactive scanning is performed. There are three types of IOC scanning. Proactive scan allows you to add information about an attack that is characterized by a certain set of indicators you may find in the internet and check all Windows devices for these indicators. Reactive scan allows you to add a threat detected by Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud to scanning. In this case, all IOCs related to this threat will be added to the scan task automatically. All Windows devices will be scanned in this case too. If using custom scan you can create a scan task and configure it as you wish, for example. Select the computers to be scanned. For each type of scanning, you can specify a response to the detection of an object that matches the IOC scan settings. The following reactions can be performed. Combinations are also possible. Notify reaction only notifies about detection. Scan critical areas reaction scans the kernel memory, running processes and disk boot sector. When quarantine a copy and delete the object reaction is used a backup copy of the malicious object is created in the quarantine. This will come in handy in the event of a false positive, while the original file is deleted. Reaction isolate the device from the network isolates device from the network to prevent malware from spreading. You can also specify the isolation time after which access to the network will be restored automatically. To further improve security, it is necessary to not only respond to known threats, but also control suspicious actions that can potentially harm the computer. The Adaptive Anomaly Control component serves this purpose in Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud. Adaptive Anomaly Control is designed to monitor atypical behavior and react in accordance with predefined rules. Anomaly Control is based on a set of rules describing actions that may be potentially dangerous for a computer. When Adaptive Anomaly Control is enabled, the administrator can activate rules on the list and configure the reaction to them. Inform is the default action. When the rule is triggered, Kaspersky Endpoint Security will allow the action and log information about it. When block action is active if the rule is triggered, Kaspersky Endpoint Security will block the action that falls under this rule and add the respective record to the log. With smart action rules work in training mode for a period determined by Kaspersky specialists. When a rule is triggered in training mode, the activity will be allowed and the respective entry will be added to a special training mode rule triggering list. When training is finished, Kaspersky Endpoint Security starts blocking actions that fall under the rules. After the training period ends, the administrator needs to analyze the contents of the training mode rule triggering list and choose the behavior for anomaly control when each rule is triggered, block or allow. If a rule was not triggered during the training period, 
the activity that it describes is considered abnormal and will be blocked by default. Adaptive anomaly control is configured separately for each security profile. In the Windows section, expand management settings and select adaptive anomaly control. Anomaly control is disabled by default. To enable it, click the switch. Anomaly control rules are also deactivated by default. Activate each rule that you want to use and select the action to be taken when it is triggered. Click Save. Now, let's trigger a few rules. To do this, we will run files that perform the following actions. Start Microsoft PowerShell from an Office application. Start Microsoft HTML application host from Windows Management Instrumentation. Start Microsoft PowerShell from Windows Management Instrumentation. Create a file named like a system file outside system folders. Since anomaly control operates in training mode, all these actions will be allowed and logged. To consult the list of triggered rules, go to quarantine and select the respective category. When you click a detected object on the list, a side pane opens where you can see additional information about the object and decide whether to confirm that this activity is abnormal and needs to be blocked, or add it to exclusions. If you confirm the detection, Anomaly control will record it as potentially dangerous and will block it in future. If you add the activity to exclusions, it will be considered safe and anomaly control will not respond to it. Let's confirm all the triggered rules and wait for the training period to end. Two weeks since any active rules were triggered, after the training period is over, anomaly control begins to function in accordance with the training results. Let's run the same files again. Adaptive anomaly control now blocks the actions performed by each of these files. The Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Platform is designed for service providers as well as for small and medium-sized enterprises. Kaspersky Business Hub implements a centralized workspace management console. This console enables managed service providers to administer protection of multiple customers, regardless of their size, infrastructure complexity and geographical distribution. All Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud components, protection, control, response and management, are available to customers. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud can protect devices running Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, as well as data stored in, or sent via, Office 365. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud for managed service providers is licensed similarly to Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud for enterprises. However, workspace management and licensing have their specifics as far as service providers are concerned. Workspaces are an important security administration tool for a service provider because they logically separate customers who receive cybersecurity services. A service provider can create a dedicated workspace for each customer organization or add several organizations to a single workspace. We recommend that you unite only small organizations. If a customer has 20 or more devices that require protection, consider allocating a separate workspace to such an organization. When working with workspaces, keep in mind that when a workspace is created, it receives a 30-day trial license. Each workspace requires a separate license or subscription. A workspace is limited to 999 users. You can have different security profiles and user accounts for different small organizations within a single workspace. A workspace is created the same way as when using Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud for the needs of a single organization. When deploying Kaspersky Endpoint Security in an organization with a large number of devices, it is not always convenient to email invitations. Alternatively, an administrator can download the installation package and deploy it centrally using Active Directory or a remote monitoring and management system. This method, however, is limited to the operating systems that the management solution supports. As a last resort, you can always install applications manually. To deploy an installation package using Active Directory, download it from the Distribution Packages page of the workspace. Save the installation package to a folder accessible to all devices where it needs to be installed. To avoid errors when installing the package, make sure the file name does not contain spaces. You can find the script for deploying a package via Active Directory in the article Deploying Security Applications by using Active Directory in Kaspersky Online Help. Create a text file. Copy the script from the article into it and edit the following parameters. Share path. Path to the installation package. Package name. File name of the installation package. KESCLOUD key name. Name of the registry key that confirms the installation has been started. 
Save the script file with the bat extension. Open the group policy management console. Expand the desired domain and create a new object in the group policy objects. Enter the name of the object and click OK to save it. Right click the object and select edit. In the window that opens, go to computer configuration, policies, windows settings, scripts, startup, shutdown. Choose startup or shutdown. Depending on when you want to perform the installation, in the window that opens, click add. In the add a script window, click browse and specify the path to your script. Click OK to save all changes. Go back to the group policy management console. Right click the target domain and select link an existing GPO. Select the created group policy object and click OK to save the changes. You can link a group policy object to an organizational unit or site in a similar manner. To speed up managing multiple workspaces and security profiles, you can import and export profiles. To export a profile, open Security Management, Security Profiles, select the profile you want to export and click Export. In the window that opens, you can protect the profile with a password. Click Export and save the generated profile file to your hard drive. Navigate to the workspace into which you want to import the security profile. Go to Security Profiles and click Add, then Import. Select the downloaded profile, enter the password if you've set one, and click Import. When the operation completes, the profile will be displayed on the list and ready for use. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud can be integrated with centralized management systems for service providers, such as NCentral, ConnectWise and others. Integration with NCentral enables administrators to monitor and centrally manage Kaspersky Endpoint security products via NCentral. NCentral administrators receive the capability to remotely install Kaspersky Endpoint security, update Kaspersky Endpoint security databases and monitor various aspects of customer protection. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud integrates with NCentral via the following policy files. Kaspersky Scan.amp allows you to scan devices. Kaspersky Update.amp allows you to update Kaspersky Endpoint databases. Kaspersky Status.xml checks whether Kaspersky Endpoint Security is installed on the device, its version, and timestamps of the most recent scanning and database updates. You can download all integration files from the Kaspersky website. Integration does not require any additional licenses. To integrate with ConnectWise Automate, use the respective Kaspersky security plugin. Integration allows ConnectWise Automate administrators to monitor protection, create tickets, manage protection, remotely deploy Kaspersky endpoint security and use a centralized dashboard. ConnectWise Automate reacts to Kaspersky endpoint security events and performs actions configured for each event type. Send notification, create a ticket, scan the system, or update Kaspersky endpoint security databases. ConnectWise Automate can automatically create tickets based on security events. Kaspersky Security Dashboard integrates with the ConnectWise Automate Dashboard to give a clear visualization of protection statuses. You can download the plugin for ConnectWise Automate from the Kaspersky website and install it by unpacking on the server where ConnectWise Automate Control Center is installed. Integration with ConnectWise Manage allows you not only to monitor and manage Kaspersky endpoint security on devices, but also integrate with all the cloud services Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud works with. Two applications are required for integration with ConnectWise Manage. Kaspersky Security Integration Tool for MSP provides a graphical interface. It allows you to configure integration between Kaspersky Security and ConnectWise Manage, as well as communications between Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud and ConnectWise Manage entities. Kaspersky Security Integration Service for MSP is an application that you can install on Microsoft Windows to set up synchronization between Kaspersky Security and ConnectWise Manage. Integration with ConnectWise Manage allows you to monitor protection, create tickets, manage protection, remotely deploy Kaspersky Endpoint Security on the connected devices, use a centralized dashboard, simplify and automate billing and generate reports on the statuses Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud workspaces and licenses as well as statistics on Kaspersky services delivered to customers. ConnectWise Manage responds to Kaspersky endpoint security events by performing actions pre-configured for each event type. Send notification, create a ticket, scan the system or update Kaspersky endpoint security databases. ConnectWise Manage can automatically create tickets based on security events. 
ConnectWise Manage can initiate database update or system scanning. Kaspersky Security Dashboard integrates with the ConnectWise Manage Dashboard to give a clear visualization of protection statuses. You can download a free integration kit from the Kaspersky website.